Electrical crew's finishing right now. We should have the sheetrock in by morning and uh, get the tape work done by the early part of the week. Look, why don't I wrap it up right here? You go uh, by so security. Hank be around? He's not. Tell Hank that Carter's here. Looks like the job's going pretty well. Huh. Must be nice to be inside after freezing your butt off all winter. Actually, when the sun was strong, uh, it felt pretty good. Never thought I'd be missing this place. It must be all your smiling faces. Tell me, did Susie decide to make it legal? Listen, Carter, I told you once. If you ever mentioned Susie again, I'd break both your legs. Now shut up Still before I shut you. Still trying to protect the lady's honor, aren't you? Even after you got her pregnant. That's it, Carter. Listen, that I'm is just it. curious. I'm just curious. Did you tell her about the $5,000 I paid you? Keep her from getting the divorce before her birthday. Maybe it would be wise to tell her before somebody else does. Sorry, I'll have to wait, Mrs. Carter. Dr. Blacker had an emergency call. I don't mind. I'll, I'll just sit and read. I'll be back in a minute. Susie's having a baby. I was your husband. It's my baby. You'll never get away from me. You're not the father. It's my baby. No. No, no more lies. Susie doesn't like lies. I'm the father. I'm the father. I'm the father. What about all this honesty, McCleary? Don't you think Susie deserves the truth? Oh, what's what's this? No fists, huh? Good. Good, because I don't want to fight with you, even though that's the way you always deal with things. You don't work here anymore, Carter. What is it you want here? I'll tell you. I well, wanted to come by. that jerk screwed up the air conditioning work. What brings you out of the woodwork, Carter? I needed to see you. I'm busy. Come back tomorrow. Uh, no, I need an answer now. All right, what's the problem? Could we talk in private? Cagney works here. What do you want? I need my job back. <laughs> Your job was gone the day you quit without giving notice. Yeah, I know. That was a mistake. You bet it was. Okay, I'll make it up to you. You will, will you? Well, let me tell you. I don't even want you around here. Is that clear enough? You're a big mouth troublemaker. I've got a job to run. I don't need somebody like you screwing up the works and giving me problems. If that were true, you wouldn't have kept me on. You want to hear the truth, Carter? You wouldn't have lasted here two days on the site if I wasn't given the word that you're one of Lloyd Kendall's boys. Okay, okay. I'm not going to give you any trouble, I promise. You won't regret hiring me back. Regret? My only regret that I didn't let Cagney tear you apart the first time he went after you. I've been around long enough to know a bad apple when I see one. Cagney, I'm going to need you. Look, Hank, i got to have my job back. I need a job, all right? I, I'm up to my ears and bills. i got a new wife to take care of. Come on, give me a break. What's it going to cost you? More problems. And I don't need it. And now that you haven't got Lloyd Candle standing behind you, I don't need you. Come over here, Cagney. We've got some work to do before we pack it in tonight. Hey, Cagney, take a look at this.
won't be much longer. Are you all right? Yes, I'm, I'm fine. Can I get you something? Some coffee? Yes, please. No, no. On second thought, no, thank you. bucks on you? I got a horse here, Willie's Rose, and she's in the eighth race, so you got enough time to put a bet down. My contact is hotter than Mount St. Helena's. I've been raking it in. Hey, you hear me talking to Yeah, you? yeah, shut up, Ringo. Oh, excuse me. I just thought my old buddy might appreciate me turning him on to some action. Ringo, do you have any idea what is going on in my life? What, are you a moron or something? You want me to give you my last few bucks to put on a horse? Hey, hey don't call me a moron, all right? I resent this. Oh, you're too stupid to resent anything. Well, what makes you so smart, Warren, huh? You got conned out of everything you own by two clowns, Brian and Mark. That was a whole conspiracy. I, look, I'm one man. How can I think of everything? Come on, he took you for a ride, not once, but twice. First with the, the rose set up, and then with the phony deed. Most guys learn from their first mistake, Warren, but not you. And you want to know what's worse Ringo. than being a moron? That's being a stupid idiot, and that's what you are. Hey, you look, your mouth is going to dig yourself your own grave. Stop with the idle threats. What are you going to do, huh? Think a minute. What are you going to do to me? Fire me? I don't work for you anymore. And I ain't hanging around busting my buns to get dumped on by you every time you louse up your all right, life. All right, all right, cool it. And you want to know something else? You make me sick. You strut around like some kind of a peacock. When you can't get a job back shoveling dirt. All right. You're nothing but a lot of hot air and empty dreams, Ringo. Warren. And you want to know why? I don't want any more grief out of you today, all right? Oh, well, that's too bad, because I'm going to tell you anyway. You get everything screwed up. You get confused between between uh, uh, bucks and broads. Instead of focusing on the bucks when they're coming in, you're focusing on the broads. You're pathetic. <sighs> what am I wasting my breath on you for? You're washed up. You're zero. You're nothing. Hey, Carl. Yeah. Yeah, this ought to take care of my tab. Take a tip out of there for yourself and, uh, give the change to Mr. Carter. The bum's broke. Hey, how you doing? Listen, I stopped by my mom's uh, studio, and she told me Susie left town. I was wondering maybe you know where she went. Wish I did. Susie and I are not exactly communicating lately. Look, I didn't mean to get personal with you. It's just that, uh, well, Susie and I are friends. You know, we go back a long time. And I'd like to help her if I could. I've seen you two together a few times, and I thought maybe you'd know where she went. To be honest, I have no idea where she is. Sure is that a character for Susie to just go away like that without saying anything? Well, I'm sure it's nothing. You're not really worried, are you? Well, sure, I'm a little concerned. I mean, it's probably nothing like you say, but, uh... Well, she's a big girl. That she is. Listen, your brother and I, uh, we're planning a night out on the town. How'd you like to come along? I mean, it seems we're all free men now. <laughs> Nobody to report to or anything, so, uh... What do you say? Sounds pretty good to me. You know, I, mean, I seem to get into a lot of trouble. It'd uh, be a pretty good idea to be hanging out with the guy who's on the police force. Oh, no, I don't know about that. It seems I have some problems keeping myself out of trouble lately. <laughs> Look, I'm going over to Bigelow's right now. You want to join me? Oh, listen, I'd love to, but I I've already got plans. I better get going, too. I'm going to be late. I'll have Hogan uh, coordinate everything with you. We'll be in touch. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. Excuse me. No problem. You must be a glutton for punishment coming back here. When I got out to the car, I suddenly remembered I took a message for you. Uh, it's from this lady. She, she called. She said it was urgent. I wrote it down. I've got it somewhere. Here. Uh, it's from a Dr. Blacker, Stanfordville. He says it's urgent. Uh, there's the number. I hope everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks a lot. Thank well, 
I gotta get back to my wife before she shoots me. She hates holding dinner. I'm sorry if I've kept you waiting. Patients have a way of ruining schedules. That's all right. I did some reading, and your secretary was very nice. That's good. Just uh, let me have another moment with this here. I'm uh, just a little concerned about that long drive you have back to Henderson ahead of you. Oh, I don't mind. I, I'm staying in Stanfordville in hopes of getting a job with the social services here at your hospital. Well, young lady, I must say I'm impressed with your resume. You have excellent grades. Your experience at the runaway shelter is just the sort of thing we're looking for here. Why don't you tell me a little more about that? Well, we've tried to create... Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Mrs. Curry has had to help out on another floor. As you can see, we are very tight on staff here. Dr. Blacker. This is Gagna McCleary returning your message, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm glad you, could, uh, you were able to call back. I'm, I wish I had better news to report. I'm afraid Justine has taken a turn for the worse. I'll get there as soon as I can. Right, and uh, would you check in with my secretary as soon as you get here? I'll do that. Right. Thank you. <laughs> 